So somebody gave me a comment on one of my videos and was trying to ask if I could show my um, retirement plan or investments. And I'm pretty passionate about the subject of retiring early, so let me pull up real quick. Let me pull up real quick. Let me tell you something. If she breathes, she's a thought! <laughs> All right, y'all, we at the Tarjay parking lot now. Totally suitable for the video. What is good, you guys? NWA here, Nurse Pat. Today we drop in some heat. So, personally, I'm determined AF to retire at 50 or, if possible, earlier. And I'm confident I could do it. I'd rather retire early and enjoy my retirement life um, at 50 rather than, like, you know, past 65 because I feel like I'd be more physically capable and I'd be able to enjoy things more, especially when I travel, I'd be able to do more things. In this video, I'm gonna talk about in depth all the factors I believe that go into this, as well as exactly how I think anybody could do it and my plan personally. Now, when you retire, ultimately depends on the lifestyle you wanna live during retirement. Do you wish to have a simple life or do you wanna be a little more bougie with it and you know travel a lot, spend a lot of money, have nice cars, stuff like that? Obviously, the more expensive the lifestyle in retirement, the more money and assets you're gonna need during retirement. Ooh, there's somebody uh, looking, walking over here while I'm filming this. Kind of awkward, act normal, act normal. Daddy chill. <laughs> the most commonly known way nurses retire is when they work for a county hospital or the jail. Since you're working for the government technically, you get to retire early and uh, they generally give you really generous pensions and retirement benefits, etc. The caveat with those is that you generally do get paid a bit less than other bigger hospitals. Now, I don't work for a county hospital, so I have to get creative in my plan for retirement. And I think it's totally doable for all nurses to retire early while not having to work in a county hospital as long as you're financially literate and careful about your spending as well as your assets. You are unlikely to retire by just saving up money until retirement. Unless you have like a huge inheritance in which kudos to you, lucky you, then you're gonna have to put your money to work. You're gonna have to put in investments or you're gonna have to invest in yourself, businesses, whatever. Otherwise, inflation will eat you alive. Especially nowadays, ugh, this inflation doing too much. Personally, I have four criteria that I would like to be met before retiring. One enough money in securities and stocks by the time of retirement. I have been maxing out my 403b, which is similar to a 401k, if you all didn't know, um, since I started working at 24 years old. Considering my hospital contribution matches, I should be able to have a lot of money in there by the age 50. Now, I know you're not supposed to withdraw until I think 64 and a half, uh, otherwise you'll get penalties. And I don't plan to do so. I'm gonna let that money grow some more. I'm gonna explain more. But numbers sake, let's just say that we're gonna track how much money's gonna be in that account at age 50. With 26 years of compound interest, say like at a generous 7% um, of gains per year, in addition to the extra that my hospital will match me, I should have about $1.8 million at age 50 in that specific account. Now, like I said, I don't plan to touch that money until after 64 and a half or maybe 65. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! From that point, you know, I don't plan to withdraw all of that in one lump sum chunk and get taxed up the a-hole <laughs> like right away. I plan to take out money incrementally per month, so it kind of will act as my income. And doing so, leaving that money in the market, it's still going to grow over time throughout my life. I do also have a pension um, with my hospital, albeit a you know, really small and slow growing one, but it's still better than nothing. I think at age 50, I should have like around two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars in that pension uh, and you know that's not a lot but that's just free money I'll take it in retirement a Roth IRA would be nice for the tax advantages but I, I make way too much money uh, to be able to put money into a Roth IRA uh, so I don't make that cut off the only way I'd be able to do so is if I did a backdoor Roth IRA which is kind of complex so I'm just like whatever about it Two, having a sizable account in my individual portfolios which include 
stocks, crypto, and other assets and securities. Now, alongside my 403B, I do also have an individual portfolio in which I'll have stocks, ETFs, crypto, etc. Crypto, I'm a little bit more conservative about, no, no more than 10% of that overall portfolio. Um, but I do put around as much uh, money in there as my 403B. So I long-term invest as well as trade. And you know, hopefully over time, I could at least be on pace with the stock market or even better. For simplicity's sake, let's just say I'm on track with S&P 500 and you know gaining seven percent ish annually at 50 years old remember i said that that account should be at 1.8 mil that means this account should also be around 1.8 mil as long as they don't make any dumb stupid moves <laughs> which is possible you know scared money don't make money anyways you just got to keep the right mindset and emotions in check yes. especially during these times everybody getting slaughtered out here i feel for you guys I feel for you guys what? So with my individual portfolio, I can take out from it whenever I want to. And long-term capital gains, I'll just be taxed 15 to 20%. I would take it incrementally out of that account uh, at age 50 if I am gonna retire there and that'll be part of my monthly uh, source of income basically. There's other advanced things that I would do with that like um, covered calls and everything like that, options basically. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about stocks and all that, but like trading, um, covered calls is is something that I like to use but yeah hopefully this account will turn into a sizable amount by 50 and then I could convert it to a, a little bit more of a less volatile safer portfolio in which I'll just be getting a bunch of dividends as well as taking advantage of those covered calls like I had mentioned earlier basically I had to be able to last 50 to 65 with that 1.8 mil um, and then I could start touching that 403B money, which is more than enough throughout the rest of my life. But there is more. Three, owning multiple real estate properties. One property for living, of course, and as much as I could get for rental properties. Ideally for those rental properties, I'd like to have them as cash flowing properties. So getting them in a good deal, etc., is key. Not only are I making monthly tax advantage income, from rental income on those properties, but your assets are also growing over time. Those renters are basically building the equity in those rental properties for you. And once those houses are paid off, especially like your house too, you know, that's a big chunk of money that you don't have to worry about paying uh, mortgage wise. And then all that rental income is just, you know, pure profit basically. And that would be another monthly source of income to add on top of the stocks that I got going on. I'm so sorry you guys, like this video is getting way too long. There's just so much to talk about. So I'm gonna have to break this up to part one and part two, because if I just made it one long video, you guys might get too bored. So I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, there's some more gems I'm gonna talk about. Uh, so in the next video, I'm gonna talk about health insurance, life insurance, social security, and just some general words of wisdom with mindset, spending habits, etc. And um, hopefully you guys stay tuned for that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, stay safe, stay humble. I'm out.